Hey guys, a uh, real quick look at the new Aperture DEC lens adapter remote wireless follow focus product. Um, nothing like this has been done before, so it's a fairly new concept, which is kind of exciting, but is it going to replace every wireless follow focus out there in the market? Probably not, but it is hugely convenient. And um, let me just kind of explain what it does, because a lot of people are kind of confused that exactly what it is and what it does. Um, so basically, this is a lens adapter that adapts Canon EF lenses onto a Micro Four Thirds mount or Sony E mount. So it'll work for cameras like the A7, A7S, and they have an adapter for cameras like the Panasonic GH4 or Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. And while other adapters exist out there for you to use Canon EF lenses, uh, so that you can change aperture. This one actually can um, provide focus, autofocus, uh, remotely to the Canon EF lens, which is kind of cool and also very handy when your system is, when your camera is on some sort of stabilizer or maybe on some sort of gimbal where you can't let go of your stabilizer to reach around and adjust the, the lens, you can do that remotely now. So. Um, again, is it perfect? I don't know. This is kind of a prototype. We're going to walk through the steps of showing you how it works, what it does, and we'll even put in some samples of um, the follow focus in action. And uh, a lot of that is going to vary on the type of lens that you use. So as you can see here, here's Canon's um, 1.4 50 millimeter, which is not an L series. And then we have a Canon L series 24 to 105 f4 with IS. Uh, we also have a Sigma, Sigma 18 to 35, 1.8. So this is not a Canon lens, but it's a Canon EF mount with autofocus. And then uh, over here, we have a 40 millimeter STM lens. Now the STM lenses uh, are fairly recent. They were designed to work with Canons like 70D with full-time video autofocus. So it's supposed to be faster and quieter for real-time video autofocusing. So hopefully this is gonna work a little bit better than the rest. But in the manual, they only state a few lenses, uh, a few Canon EF lenses, and some of these are not on that list. So um, I can't tell you if it's gonna work great, but I have tried it and they do work. It does communicate with this, even though it's not listed in the user manual of the DEC at this time. Remember, this is all prototype concept still. Um, anyways, inside the box here, let me show you. We've got a remote, we've got the lens adapter, and then we have just kind of a few accessories. You've got a little mount here with um, kind of a rosette here with a clamp. Now what this allows you to do is actually mount the remote um, to the, to like your rig, your shoulder rig or something. And then you can use this as a handle where you can control all aspects of your lens, which is your aperture. You can focus, you can store focus points, A and B focus points, which is kind of like limiters. You can also start and stop video on certain cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket or the GH4, they have LANC in, so you can uh, um, start and stop the video on some of those cameras. Um, so it can be used as a handle for say a gimbal or even a shoulder rig where you do all the operations on here. Um, so not everything needs to be used on here when it comes to working with focusing on a camera. Pretty much, this is all you're gonna need is just the lens adapter and the wireless remote. Now these are paired up, so they're in sync, and this remote will control the aperture and focus of the EF lens. So very small kind of kit here for you know just changing focus points. Now, in reference, what this, this is a very cheap, uh, well, I won't say cheap, but this is an affordable wireless follow focus system. And it's got similar parts to other follow focus systems on the market. It may not be the smallest, but typically what you work with is a lens gear. So you have to mount this to the camera, and then obviously you have to have a lens gear on your lens that you're using. And then you've got a wireless follow focus remote here that you would use. 
But in order to mount all that, you're going to need a couple of, you know, 15 millimeter rods at the least. Um, and then to drive this motor, you're going to need a battery. So this is here, a battery and a wireless receiver for the remote. So this all has to be mounted as well. So to put a wireless follow focus system onto a camera usually requires all of those pieces. And then every time you change lenses, you may have to readjust, uh, you know, if your lens gear is not in the same place, you have to adjust that, you have to rebalance, you have to do all kinds of weird stuff. So with the aperture one, um, all you need is a lens adapter. So as you change lenses, there are no lens gears, there are no motors, no 15 mil rods, no battery packs, wireless receivers, nothing. It's really just this lens adapter. Um, so let me put this guy away here. All right, so before we put this on, let's take a close look at this guy. Now, over here, this is the adapter. There's a little LCD screen on the side, and that kind of tells you the distance, the focal distance of the lens, whatever it's set to. So for instance, if we're using a 24 to 105, if we zoom in to like say 85 mil, it will show up here. It also register the aperture value on this LCD screen and battery power. Now, as you notice on the back here, there are no connections. This is not a smart adapter in which you can change aperture on the camera or from the camera. This will change aperture through the wireless remote. And there are no options on this adapter for you to change aperture uh, from the adapter itself. So everything happens from the remote. Now, if you take a look at something like Red Rock's live lens adapter here, this one, again, is not a, this one's not a smart adapter, so it doesn't communicate with the camera. It communicates with the lens. So there's some pins over here for the Canon lens. And then your aperture is changed over here on this box. And in order to power this box, you need this other uh, nine volt battery with this cable so that you can adjust aperture. And that's all you could do is adjust aperture on a Canon EF lens, um, whereas this aperture one allows you to change aperture as well as focus with the EF lens. So this kind of does a little bit more than this guy, which originally was $600 plus, probably now it's less, but this one, we're not quite sure what the price is gonna be just yet, but uh, I'm assuming it's gonna be uh, more expensive than something like this, maybe closer to $1,000 is what the original quote was last year, but we'll see what they actually bring that price down to. So again, this one you can change aperture and focus your lens. Something like this you can't. Then we've got the Metabones adapter. Now the Metabones adapter is a smart adapter because it has the connections here at the back. This connects to the, um, say your Sony camera and you're able to change aperture from the camera dials. So it's kind of convenient because you could do that all in camera, uh, but Needless to say, it's a little buggy sometimes depending on the lens and kind of has some issues where you have to reboot this system. So um, anyways, this is the Metabones and this guy runs probably about $400 as well. So lens adapters aren't cheap, um, but this is the only one that allows you to do both aperture and focus. All right, so let's get set up here. So on the Sony lens or in the Sony body, all we have to do is add this lens adapter. That's it. So let's go ahead and throw on a lens here. I'm going to throw on this uh, small 40 mil pancake STM lens. All right. Now we have this remote. Let me uh, show you guys up close here. So here's a remote right here. All we need to do is hit the on off switch on the side. Okay, on off switch. Then on the side here, you're gonna start seeing something on the menu. And then we hit the power button on this remote. Now these are already paired up. So if you could see the screen over here, we have readings. It says 40 mil 2.8. Now this is not a zoom lens, so I can't change the focal length, but I could change the aperture. So and then I don't know if you could see inside here but by just dialing this wheel and changing the aperture. So focus is done from the 
uh, remote here using this little uh, toggle switch going back and forth. So you can see I can remotely control focus on this lens. Now I can store A and B points, but it doesn't jump to those A and B points by pushing the button. It's kind of like setting a limiter, um, hard stops on a follow focus. This is probably not a good lens to use it as an example. So let me switch lenses and then show you something um, that has more markings. So we're going to put this uh, 24105 on here. All right, so we have the 24 to 105, and as you can see on the remote here, it says 24 millimeters. And my aperture currently is at f4. This is an f4 lens. But again, if I just change this here, I don't know if you can see that, you'll see on the remote we're at uh, f14 now. And now we're at f4 again. So here you can see on uh, where my, my focus point is here, I can go to infinity, I can go closer to macro. Now, well, the A and B points here, if I wanted to say my focus point, I would stop at, let's say, let's say a foot. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to store that as A, right? You get a little buzz in the remote, and then you'll notice there's a little A on the, the menu now. That means my A is set. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll go to, say, 35 here, 35. Uh, now I'm going to hit B. And then you get an A and B shown in the remote menu now. So at that point, if you look at my markers here, as I operate this remote, I have hard stops now. So if I jump over to uh, A, um, you'll notice where it stops, and then B, and A, and B. And it's just repeating where, where it's stopping. So if you, I don't know if you can see the uh, menu there, but very fast. Now, um, when you want to go slower, you're going to adjust uh, this. The, the further you adjust this, the faster it goes. So if we just kind of do this a little bit, you'll see that it's changing focus. And it's doing it very slowly until it reaches the end. And then same at the other direction. And that's it. So you can control the speed. You'll notice that this lens is sort of stepping. And that could be typical of this type of lens. Um, you have to try different lenses to see how smooth the action is. Now, even though it's stepping, uh, it could be uh, very smooth in actual use. Um, so we're going to give you some samples to show you how it rack fo focuses from one to the next in uh, either fast speeds and also slow speeds. All right, um, you see we have the remote here. We've got the DEC attached. This is a Sigma 18 to 35 1.8, which is not in the aperture user manual as far as lenses that have been tested, but it seems to be working. We have the A7S over here to the Shogun. And then as you can see, I could uh, remotely change focus on this um, Sigma lens. So what I'll do is I'll first set the focus point on uh, this item right here. I'll hit A, and then I'll zoom back in and focus more in this area here, and hopefully I'm, I'm in focus, and then I hit B. And then it's a matter of just hitting A, B, because it's limited on the remote now. And so as I go back from uh, A to B, I'm hitting my two focus points. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put more into this frame here. And I'm also going to uh, rack focus very slowly. I'll, I'll try to get something moving in the background there. So you guys could see uh, how smooth it, it actually changes focus from uh, one point to the next. So right here you can see I'm changing focus very slowly. And then I'll do it again. I'll just go very slowly. It's actually changing focus. And now it's at the other point. So... Again, um, the motor is sort of stepping, but whether you could tell in post or not, um, we're going to find out. And again, I'll put more stuff back there and have some guys moving around and we'll see how 
smooth that is. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so in this example here, we're going to focus from near to far, but we're gonna do it slow. Um, and hopefully there's enough movement in the frame to show if the lens is stuttering as it's changing focus points. So everything you're gonna watch in this video is just gonna be slow transitions from the foreground to the background. Um, so here we go. All right, and that kind of concludes the test. Uh, that's a quick focus and a slow rack focus. You guys tell me what you think. All right, so um, that's it. This is just kind of a quick look at the Aperture DEC. We'll do some more stuff later on, but for more information about this stuff, check it out at the blog, cheesycam.com.